The story of Moore House and the Phelps family who once lived there forms an important strand of Kempley's religious history. Van Golding, a farmer's daughter and a devout Baptist who grew up at Oxenhall, has become a keen archivist of the non-conformist movement in the area, and her research into the property uncovered an unexpected and unusual detail in her own family history. My grandfather went there when he was 13, was taken in by James Phelps and his wife, because his father had died. So he went to live with them and, and worked there, and he was married and lived there with his for a few years after um, he got married. He'd been very greatly helped by James Phelps. Then I discovered that my father's grandmother had a similar experience in the same place, because she was only eight in 1851, and she was staying with James Phelps, and he and Sarah brought her up. So both my mother's family and my father's family have got connections with Morehouse. But let's go back to 1811 and the beginning of the story that Van discovered about Morehouse. This farmhouse near Queenswood was quite a long way from the highway, down a muddy cart track running across the fields from Kempley. The house and buildings were surrounded by cider and perry orchards. Some were used for growing arable crops and others were kept as pasture. Cows, sheep, pigs and poultry were reared on the farm, together with cart horses for farm work and for transporting goods. Carting was a useful source of extra income, supplementing the sales of cider and perry. Robert Phelps, the farmer, and his family were kept busy with ploughing and planting, haymaking, harvesting, fruit picking and cider making. They were never short of firewood or water, as the woodland trees overhung the field, and there were springs that never ran dry and a well. The family led a self-sufficient life, growing potatoes, vegetables and soft fruit in the garden, producing milk and eggs, making butter and killing their own pigs, chickens and geese. They also made their own bread and cider, both key ingredients for the traditional ploughman's lunch. Robert married Elizabeth Burgham at Upton Bishop in February 1811. She, like many of her peers, was illiterate and made a mark in the register alongside Robert's signature. They lived at Morehouse until they died, he in 1830 and she in 1837. They had four children, three boys and a girl. James, the eldest, inherited the farm and stayed at the house, more of him later. Sophie married and moved to Gloucester. Richard, the youngest, stayed working on the farm until the 1850s, while lodging at Kempley Green. Robert and Betty became respected members of the village community. He held the important official post of overseer of the poor, a role his wife, who had since learnt to read and write, took over as deputy when he died. The role involved collecting the rates and distributing food, money and clothing to the poor and needy in the village as part of the poor law system. James was only 18 when his father died, leaving him to take on the challenging role of farmer and head of the family. Two years later he married a local girl, Sarah Forty, daughter of the shoemaker living at Kempley Green. The Forty family are still strongly represented locally and were the village bakers until the 1980s. James was a successful farmer, increasing the area he farmed from 16 acres, with two 17-year-old farmhands in 1851, to 150 acres, with three men and two boys to help, in 1871. James and Sarah weren't blessed with children, and took in an orphan. Hannah Preedy, Van's paternal great-grandmother, was probably the sole family member surviving an outbreak of scarlet fever. It was Sarah who first became involved with the growing Baptist movement and was baptised by immersion at Gorsley Goffs Chapel. She lapsed for a few years, but regained her interest when the Kempley Chapel was being built around 1856. Let Van tell us more about what led to the building of the chapel in Kempley that's still in use today. Many poor families living in Kempley Green didn't really have a great interest in going to the Anglican Church. In uh, 1830, John Hall came to the area as a pastor and a school teacher and set up the school at Gorsley Goff School. He wanted as many children as possible from the area to come to school, to learn, to read, especially to read the Bible for themselves. And then he visited the local people, the farmers, the agricultural labourers, and encouraged them to have Bible meetings in their homes, so that on Campley Green um, there was a group started. 
so many people from Kempy Green joined Gorsi Baptist that they decided to have their own chapel on the green and people wouldn't have to travel so far. So in 1856, they actually built that red chapel that you want to see. It's used every week uh, for Sunday school and occasionally we have services there at special times of the year. Sarah Phelps began teaching the Sunday school and continued to educate many of the children from the 36 Kempley Green properties until her death in 1878. As we've just heard, the non-conformists had an important role in bringing education as well as faith to the poor. Kempley didn't have an established school until after the Education Act of 1870. James Phelps too joined the Baptists and eventually became a well-loved deacon. Hannah, the orphan, took the family name and in 1863, aged 20, married Charles Jones from a neighbouring farm, Naphead. They named their first son James Phelps Jones, a rather fitting tribute to her adoptive family. Hannah and Charles had six more children, all of whom attended Goth School and became members of the church. Their descendants still farm in Kempley and adjoining parishes, and many have leading roles in the local non-conformist churches. After Sarah died, James remarried. His second wife, Elizabeth Husband, was a member of Gorsley Baptist Church. Like his first wife, she was very hospitable and aware of her social duty. This led to James and Elizabeth offering work and a home to Albert Brooks, the boy who'd become Van's maternal grandfather, a 13-year-old lad from Kempley Green. Albert was labouring for his uncle at Friars Court. His father, an engine driver, had died, leaving the family hard-pressed. And Albert's job was a very strenuous one, carting stone from the Gorsley quarries throughout the hours of daylight. So the young man readily appreciated the warmth and welcome of Moore House and James and Elizabeth Phelps. Albert went on to become a Sunday school teacher at Kempley Chapel, eventually rising to lay preacher and deacon. Albert and his wife, Mary Fowler, cared for James and Elizabeth Phelps in their old age until they died in 1898. Husband and wife were interred in the same grave as Sarah Phelps at Gorsley. <laughs> 